Cześć! Jak się macie? And today I will, I'm going to talk about applications of genitive because I believe that most of you has ever had this problem like most of my students and most of the, peop the people that speak Polish but they are not native speakers they have this problem all the time so let's solve it here I come to the rescue and I hope that this video will help you and just to start this is not going to be to be video about the endings but about the applications and we are not going to go very deep because it's impossible it's a topic for long long class so I'm going to talk about genitive quite briefly and if you want to learn more you can visit um, Patricia's or my page where we have plenty of exercises, we have explanation on my page www.polskidaily.eu. You can of course find um, the guide about functions of cases. It's simplified, it's basically for beginners, but you can search for it. And of course, in our pictures, in our posts, you can, feel, you can find a lot of useful posts about genitive as well. So to start, the first application is possession. Of course, when you want to when you want to relate to something or someone that is belonged that belongs to something else or someone else, you have to use genitive. So for those of you who speak English, you also have genitive in English. You just use apostrophe and s. So if I want to say Adam's house in Polish, the problem will be only in the word order because in Polish it's reversed. So if the word house is dom, we have to put dom in the beginning and we have to put Adam in the end. And Adam will be in genitive, so it will get the suffix. I will say dom Adama. Dom Adama is the proper use of genitive here. But of course, it doesn't have to be only about people. We can say, for example, the door of the house. If you know, you can type in a comment how to say the door of the house in Polish. Which of these words, drzwi, the door, or dom, the house, will be in genitive? Of course, dom. So we will have drzwi, domu, the door of the house. And here I used of, which should be your trigger. This is what you should always see in genitive. What I mean is whenever you think about of, English of, in Polish it has to be genitive. And it leads us to the third application of genitive, a piece of something. It can be some smaller piece of bigger um, entity. It can be a package. For example, if we want to say a bottle of water. Okay, this is time for you to think. What's the word for bottle? Butelka. And water is voda. So butelka is the piece. And voda is the something. So voda has to be in genitive. Butelka wody. And this is actually the problem that I can see very often, especially with the beginners. Like you get confused which one should be in genitive. So the bigger thing, the bigger view is the, uh, the genitive. And the smaller piece, it, it can be nominative or whatever you need to use in this particular sentence. Okay, and we can also express quantity, not only amount, but quantity with numbers. And this is where Polish becomes a little bit complicated because after number five, you have to use genitive. And maybe you remember when you learn how to say how old you are, ile masz lat, then you, you probably learn that dwa, trzy, and cztery will have a normal plural, nominative plural, but after five, you have to use genitive plural. It's quite complicated and another, another topic for a long lecture or a class, 
which I, of course I invite you. And, but just try to remember after five, we have genitive plural. So how would you say five tomatoes? I'm giving you a second, a pause, five tomatoes. Pięć pomidorów. Pięć pomidorów. Pomidorów is plural for masculine. Okay, but we also have my favorite application of genitive and something that usually students on higher level struggle, the imperfect numbers. Some linguists also call them adverbs and there's a little bit of a debate if they are numbers or, adver or adverbs. And I mean words like dużo, a lot, mało, little, kilka, few, niewiele, kilka, a few, niewiele, few, um, mniejszość, minority, większość, majority, and there are some more. So these words also require you to use genitive, genitive plural. And there's one more thing here. You have to connect them with singular verbs. So if I want to say, for example, a lot of Polish people like beer. Another pause for you. If you're watching on offline, you can also try to answer in your head or aloud. Dużo Polaków lubi piwo. I said lubi because of this imperfect number dużo. Dużo Polaków, genitive plural, lubi, singular verb, piwo. That's how we use it. If you're on B2, B1, this is also for you. And I hear it so many times, so I hope that it's helpful. Okay, we are now in number five, expressing lack. I always say that genitive is such a negative case. It expresses lack, it exp you use it in negative sentences, so it's not very friendly. Yes, and it's not very friendly because of the endings, because of the use. So here we are. If I want to say, I don't have time. Nie mam czasu. Mam czas, I have time, accusative. Nie mam czasu. Nie mam mleka. I don't have milk. If you want to buy something in a kiosk, for example, you want to buy um, cigarettes, you can ask, są papierosy? And you can hear the answer, nie ma papierosów. Nie ma papierosów, there's no cigarettes. I'm sorry, przepraszam. And as I mentioned, the positive sentence you can use with accusative. So accusative, just to give it a little bit of intro, is the direct object, generally. So when some verb comes with accusative naturally, and you want to make a negative sentence, the word after the verb, the noun, the adjective after the verb will come in genitive. So I can say, I like sport. Lubię sport. And then you can be negative and you can say, nie lubię sportu. Nie lubię sportu. I used u, which is one of the endings for genitive. You can say, lubię kino. And I will say, nie lubię kina. Nie czytam książek. Nie oglądam telewizji. All these sentences were in genitive because of the negation. But you have to also remember that whenever you use, for example, instrumental or locative, and you want to make a negative sentence, there will be no change. It will be still instrumental, locative, or dative. Okay, so it works only with accusative. We have two left. Number seven is after prepositions. And, and again, I have a tip for you learn verbs with prepositions because so many times you just learn a verb and then you have no idea what will come after 
because prepositions are such a small and um, seemingly irrelevant words, but they're extremely useful and extremely important. And whenever uh, you try to translate them, they don't overlap in languages. If you learned other languages, for example, your English and you learned Spanish, you, you, you saw that it's different. It doesn't match the same with Polish. For example, let's take the word for. For in Polish can be na, dla, po, za, and probably a couple of more. I don't remember all of them now. So learn prepositions with cases. And here I'll, I'm going to give you a couple of prepositions that you have to use with genitive. First of all, odd, which means which mean from, but only when you speak about time or people. So if I want to say from Monday to Friday, I will say od poniedziałku do piątku. Another example. Um, from from uh, from my friends how uh, no from my friends to my grandma od koleżanki od mojej koleżanki do babci it's not the best uh, example i guess uh, but yes how, that's how it works od you can use only with time and people and there's another from it's z or z depending on the next consonant which means from with places. So if I want to say that I'm going from work to supermarket, it will sound like this. Jadę z pracy do supermarketu. Okay, so we have already three prepositions. Od, z, do. Another one will be dla, which is one of the translations for for. But if you give, if you're giving something to someone, you can say, um, ten present is dla ciebie. This gift is for you. And then I use ciebie in genitive, which is genitive of ty, you, dla ciebie. Another one is a preposition of place, which is obok, next to. Mój dom jest obok apteki. My house is next to the pharmacy. And another one, u. U is a very interesting proposition because it, it means at, but you use it with people. So if, we, if you want to say, I was at my uncle's in Polish, you will say, byłem or byłam for women, byłam u wujka. Byłam u mojego wujka. And the last proposition that I'm going to mention, oprócz. Oprócz is except. Jem wszystko oprócz kapusty. I eat everything except cabbage. Which, of course, it's not true because I'm from Poland and we have beagles, we have pierogi z kapustą, we have sour cabbage, we eat a lot of cabbage and I love cabbage. Um, but it's time for the last application of genitive that I prepared for you, which is czasowniki, verbs. There is a group of verbs that even if they are in positive sentences, they must be used with genitive. And a lot of Polish people make mistakes here. And I listen to podcasts very often and I hear Polish people using accusative with these verbs and then I have goosebumps. I turn it off immediately because when I really don't care about grammar uh, when foreigners speak because I'm anyway I'm proud of them and I'm glad that they want to learn Polish then I just can't stand Polish people using wrong grammar. So the verbs are I'm, there there's a long list of the verbs but I'm going to give you five and the first of them is potrzebować, to need. Potrzebować. Czego potrzebujesz? Maybe you can type in, in the comment to practice, and I would be very glad to read it. 
czego potrzebujesz. Uczyć się. To study or to learn. So many times beginners say uczę się polski. And it's wrong. Uczę się polskiego. Uczę się języka polskiego. As well, the verb uczyć, to teach, also takes genitive. Bać się. This irregular verb must be used with genitive. To be afraid of or to fear. Bać się. Boję się pająków, ciemności i kosmosu. Actually, that's true, and I don't know why, but I'm scared of the universe. Boję się kosmosu. I can't look into the at stars. Weird, isn't it? And number four, słuchać. To listen. Słuchać muzyki. For example, jakiej muzyki słuchasz? Leave me a comment. I really want to know what kind of music you listen to, so um, I can prepare more learn Polish with songs, uh, which you can find in my website. And szukać. Szukać to search, to look for. Czego szukasz? Czego szukasz w życiu? That's a very deep question. What are you looking for in life? Czego szukasz w życiu? And I definitely look for your likes and you being active in 1000 Reasons to Learn Polish and listening to our podcast. And this week, finally, there will be the first podcast with me and Patricia released and i hope that you will like it if you're advanced this will be for you if you're a beginner i'm thinking about also launching some easier episodes when we will explain more grammar and idioms and so on and i have a bonus for you if you really watch 70 minutes then um, if you type all the applications of genitive in a comment and you're going to be first or fifth person both of these people will get a free class with me. Or if you're my husband watching it, uh, I can spend the 60 minutes um, doing dishes and tidying the apartment. Or if you're my mother, which I see that she's here, uh, I can just Skype with you. So thank you for watching so much and see you the next week. Follow our page and don't forget to click see first because so little of you can see our posts, unfortunately. Take care. Good evening. Have a good evening. Do zobaczenia. Cześć.